Where the Apostle John says in 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. Understand this, church. If you believe today, it's because God chose you too. You only love him because he sought you out. He pursued you as the student. Did you know this? You and I were not any smarter than anybody else. That is not why you followed Christ. The example we have here, four Galilean fishermen. They are no smarter. We're no more humble than my neighbor. James and John are being called here in our passage. They're known in the scriptures as the sons of thunder. Why is that? Because in a conversation with Jesus, they say, can't you just call down fire and destroy our enemies? You think they're more humble than the others? They're not more humble. Friends, God chooses who he wills. Period. Because he's the sovereign, he can do what he wants. And he's choosing now four people for his purpose. This is the mystery of amazing grace, friends. When John Newton had that song in the 1700s, he understood this. Grace is completely free, it's, it's undeserved, and it's bestowed upon all whom God chooses. And that's what happens here with Peter, James, and John. They repented. Yes, they did. They believed. Absolutely. But God also chose those men too. You see the wonder here? The mystery of this? The two-sided coin? This is the wonderful mystery of God's election. God's choosing of people. And the mystery of human responsibility. Friends, these are two truths in the Scripture that run parallel all the time. It's an amazing mystery. Never contradicting each other. So church, I can't stress this enough. God does the exact same thing with you. He did it to me. He's done it to others. I came to Him only because He came to me. Dead sinners do not respond to the call unless they are woken up by the regeneration of the Spirit. That is the grace of God. And so friends, that's the understanding of the text. Now I want to apply it. What's our takeaway? One takeaway here primarily. Our Lord Jesus, who called these disciples to do the job of snatching them from the fires of judgment and discipling of the nations, now calls you and I. That's the application. You remember how Mark has been very clearly showing us how Jesus fulfills the path of Israel? For the visitors here, I'll catch us up quickly with a few bullet points. Jesus baptized in the waters. Israel baptized through the waters of the Red Sea. Jesus is tempted in the wilderness for 40 days. Israel goes into the wilderness after the baptism, tempted for 40 years. Jesus is called the Son of God. In Hosea 11.1, 1, Israel was called God's Son. And so, now here's the picture. Jesus is now a new type of Israel, now calling a new people to Himself. And in this passage, He begins with four. But by the end... He has 12. Now friends, what's the significance of 12? There were 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus here now is calling a new people to him. Now as the new Israel, he's now gathering people to himself. Now why am I highlighting this? What's the point? Because the task of Israel in the Old Testament is to be a light to the nations. That was their job. We often think Israel is just to stay but the promise of Isaiah 2 is everybody's going to come up to the temple. Everyone, all nations will. So listen to Isaiah 49, 6. It says, It is too light a task, too light a thing, excuse me, that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. See, friends, Israel was God's servant. But particularly the true servant was actually Jesus. Because in Isaiah 53 it says, My servant will make many to be accounted righteous, and he, the servant, shall bear their iniquities. And so Jesus being the servant, he's now raising up the tribes of Israel, raising up a new people so that they can now be a light to the nations. That's what's happening with Jesus here. He's calling now a new people to now go and advance the glory of God. And now you and I are called to the same task, being now joined to Christ by faith. We're now called to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. By extension, 
Through Christ, we are now part of the new people to glorify Christ throughout the entirety of the world. And so here's where it begins for us, practically, in your home. That's where it starts. We talked about this yesterday in our men's breakfast. It begins in your house, in your home. If God has blessed you with children or even with grandchildren, this is now your harvest field for discipleship. God has given you these little minds and these hearts to be shepherded and to be taught the word of God. Be fishers first of those little souls. Give them the means of grace. So pray for them. Read the Bible to your children. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to them. Make a nation or make disciples of the small little nation that's placed under your roof. Begin there. And then secondly, we spread out to the community. Be a diligent fisher of where God has appointed you. Paul makes the case in Acts 17, he says that God actually appoints the boundaries of all men. You're exactly where you're supposed to be by God's ordination. And so now you're called to fish. Go snatch people from the fire. Share the good news with your neighbors. And as a matter of fact, statistics prove this. Most Christians have never done this. They've never done it. Never shared the gospel with their neighbor. And so I'm going to challenge our church in the month of October. We're going to take a Saturday and we're going to go out to our community and we're going to knock on doors and make people feel very uncomfortable. I'm talking about ourselves. It's uncomfortable. We're going to give them the gospel. Because, friends, God can save who he wants. Sometimes evangelism is about raising up the body of Christ. And so we're going to be challenged in that way coming up in October. And then thirdly, God calls us not just to our home, not just to our community, but to the ends of the globe. And so these fishermen from Galilee, they had no idea how their lives were going to be expanded by following Christ. Because for them, primarily, their boundaries were Galilee. They stayed up right around where you could fish. And occasionally they would go to Jerusalem for a festival. But when Christ came, their boundaries were blown apart. John becomes the bishop of Ephesus. Peter goes to Rome. Andrew, it's said that he goes all the way to the borders of Russia. Their hearts were enlarged with a passion for the nations. Their minds grew with this greater love and understanding of Christ. And so when you follow Christ, your heart and your mind grow. I mean, I'll give a few examples here, even within this body of what this looks like. I think of my brother here, Jameis, and he's visiting us. He's been in Haiti for three months, a three-month stint. Him and his wife are now going to go to Haiti, and they're going to be proclaiming the gospel to an unreached people group. When the gospel came to him, it didn't just stay in his home and his community. It expands to all borders of the earth because, friends, we are to be a light to the nations. I think of my parents over here. They minister in Africa. They're part of a board, a missionary board there. I think of others in this room. Our brother CJ, he ministers to the preborn. I mean, what a, a grace and privilege it is that we get to be now fishers of men and press the boundaries of the kingdom of God throughout the entirety of the earth. Now, I understand the labors for Christ and the advancement of his kingdom are difficult. I'm sure you guys have had some difficulty, even hurdles, getting to where you are at this point. And yet there's great rewards. We must cast forth the net and then let the sovereign God draw by grace his people because the promise is he will surely do it. Let us be faithful and obedient to our risen Savior. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for this word. It's great text. I do pray that your people are blessed today. They are encouraged. They're convicted. They're challenged. And that the impact that we had, not just here on Sunday, but they would go forth throughout the entirety of the week, that a little seeds would be planted and they would be cultivated and watered and they would continue to grow. Father, thank you for your continued grace towards us. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, would you respond with me in song? Respond to the preaching of the word in song. If you would stand with me, we'll sing the doxology.